In September 1950, the U.S. Air Force issued a request for an all-weather jet-powered bomber. The aircraft should also be able to serve in a reconnaissance capacity. The bomber should be based on an existing aircraft, to speed up the process. Five different aircraft were evaluated, and soon the British-built English Electric Canberra proved to be significantly superior to the other evaluated aircraft. Since the Canberra was a British aircraft, it was not guaranteed that it would gain political support in competition with the American aircraft, that had also been evaluated. There was also a worry that English Electric would not be able to meet U.S. Air Force demands. However, in March 1951, a contract was issued between the U.S. Air Force and American company Martin, and soon a license agreement was made for Martin to license manufacture the Canberra. The first version of the B-57, the B-57A, was very similar to the Canberra B-2, although it had more powerful engines. The more powerful engines were chosen because the B-57 needed to operate in hot climates, and fly at a slightly higher gross weight than the Royal Air Force. There were also minor modifications to the canopy and fuselage, and the B-57 was built for two crew members instead of three. There was also an addition of wingtip fuel tanks, and a different bomb bay design on the American version. In July 1953 the first American-built production aircraft was delivered, and a month later it entered service in the U.S. Air Force. In total, there were only eight B-57As produced, and another 67 reconnaissance aircraft designated the RB-57A. The B-57B was modified more than the B-57A, and this resulted in an aircraft that was more adaptable than the previous version. It had a different canopy and a tandem seating arrangement, which improved the view for the crew. A gun sight was added, and the glass nose of the B-57A was removed. Also, four hardpoints were attached to the outer wings, adding the capability to carry external bombs and rockets. Internal guns were also added. There were several other modifications made to the B-57B, including adding an APW-11 bombing air radar guidance system, and an APS-54 radar warning receiver. Due to the major upgrades made on the B-57B, the project ran out of money, and only 177 out of 250 planned aircraft were produced. When the aircraft proved to perform well, another 100 B-57Bs were ordered, as well as 38 B-57C trainers, 20 RB-57D high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft and 68 B-57E target tugs. In 1969, 16 B-57Bs were converted to night interdiction aircraft. These aircraft were equipped with a new nose section and a forward-looking radar, infrared detector as well as a low-light television system. A laser rangefinder was added, and the capability to carry laser-guided paveway bombs was also added. The U.S. Air Force did not consider the B-57A combat ready, although the reconnaissance version RB-57A saw operational use. However it had engine problems, and the delivery of the aircraft was slow. From 1958 to 1971 it only saw service in the Air National Guard, where it was used for photographic surveys. Some retired RB-57As were modified to electronic countermeasures aircraft, and were designated EB-57A. Strategic Air Command operated 20 RB-57D aircraft until 1964, but not much is known about how they were used. In the Vietnam War, B-57Bs were primarily used for bombing and strafing. They were excellent ground support aircraft and capable truck killers along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. 51 B-57Bs were lost in combat, and 7 other Canberras were lost to other causes. RB-57Es were also used for high-altitude strategic photo reconnaissance during the war. The missions were flown over South Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia and North Vietnam until 1971. At some flights they were teamed with B-57B bombers. In total 5 RB-57Es served in the war. Two were lost in combat operations. A total of 403 B-57s were produced, and the type also served in the Pakistan Air Force and the Republic of China Air Force. The B-57 was retired from use in the U.S. Air Force in 1983. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel.